Hi there, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about why it's not that easy to set up your own data science consultancy and run it successfully, even if you are a good data scientist or a data engineer. Okay, and let me give you a scenario for this. Let's say you've been working in this field. Let's say you've been a data scientist or a data engineer for many, many years, and you've worked for both consultancies, you've worked both for uh, big companies, and therefore you have a pretty clear understanding of what is actually needed from you in this field. So you might think that you have a very good picture of what projects companies actually look for, and you're thinking, why can't I just do that myself? I mean, why should I pay? Why should I just get employed by a company and work for a salary when I can get that money myself? I can just pitch for a project. I can get 100k projects. I can just scale my time. Haven't you had this thought already? Because I did, and I'm sure that many other people wanted to start their own data science consultancy. And I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why it's not that easy just to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to start from the offer side. And the first reason, and I think is the most obvious reason, is that in order to set up your data science consultancy and to run it successfully, you need more soft skills than actual data science and machine learning skills. And I talk about soft skills in a previous video, but what is important here is that you need more than just knowing the intricacies of this field in order to be successful in, in uh, running your own consultancy. Let me tell you a story about this. A couple of years ago, I was working for a consultancy and I was actually in the kitchen with the founder. We were just having a cup of coffee and he was telling me, he, he said something like, Radu, do you know why this agency is successful? It's because I don't know how to offer the services that I offer. I don't personally know how to offer the services that I offer. It was something around these lines. He said something that what I do is hire the best people that I can and I only facilitate the meetings be between them and potential clients and then, then they sort out the, the details of the deals and then how to run each individual project. And imagine this company, this agency was so successful they had contracts with the top banks in the UK and also I think a couple of years later, I think maybe even last year or two years ago, they were like bought by a big company that actually needed their services and they wanted to bring their own agency in-house. So you see, it's more about selling and the soft skills that you have in order to facilitate meetings with potential clients rather than actually knowing the intricacies because if you know too much about the industry okay especially when you run a consultancy what you tend to do is to micromanage everybody in the team and try to tell everybody how they should actually do their jobs and that's not very good in the long term because people can get frustrated because they don't have the agency to to run their own projects in the way that they know how Another reason is how do you differentiate yourself from other data science consultancies and software development companies? Because just putting AI and machine learning all over your website and claiming that you solve data problems is not enough to actually get clients. Because a lot of big consultancies that work in this space already offer uh, data science and machine learning services. Okay, A lot of software development companies already have this in their offering. How do you actually differentiate yourself to offer a specific niche service? Because big consultancies help potential clients with their ever-changing needs when it comes to resources. A lot of times in many projects, many clients have no idea what actually resources they need, whether they need a data analyst, whether they need a data scientist or a data engineer or a software engineer. Big consultancies facilitate this change very easily. They can easily flip resources and just put them on a project or another very easily because a client might change their request during the actual development. And then what do you do? Because you don't need that person anymore. Okay, you initially uh, offer them a data scientist, but then two weeks in they realized, oh, I actually need a, uh, a data engineer for this particular pipeline. And therefore you kind of need to change people in between projects and even within the same project. If you're a very small company, you might not have that resource available immediately. And big companies actually facilitate that and therefore 
you're kind of at a loss here because you only have just a handful of people that can actually work and move around on different projects. And another aspect on this is pricing. How do you actually price yourself? How do you set up that dynamic pricing when it comes to your offering? Because a lot of big companies, apart from the fact that they can switch um, resources you know, from one project to another very easily, what they do, when they actually pitch for a project, they just say, okay, we're going to offer you these free resources. We're going to offer you these free uh, data scientists or data engineers to work on this POC, to work on this proof of concept. And within that time frame that they offer those services for free, they pitch for other projects with that client. So how do you battle that? How can you battle a big consultancy that offers resources for free? But because you actually have to work for money and you cannot just offer your uh, resources for free for companies just to get uh, a, a pitch. That makes it very, very hard for small consultancies to break in with big clients. The last and the most important challenge when it comes to offering data science services is the fact that the sales cycle for B2B for consulting services lasts anywhere from like three months to a year or more depending on a client. And that is because the procurement process for big companies is very, very lengthy and very, very hard. Okay, they, they make it very hard to get new agencies on board to work with big clients. So therefore you have to wait between three to, I don't know, 12, 18 months in order to actually get a project. And think about it, even, even if you have a good relationship with, uh, with the client when you're building that relationship and you think like, okay, definitely I'm gonna get this, this client after, I don't know, six months, okay? You have everything set up. You might not even get that client eventually because something happens. I don't know, maybe the person that you are talking to moves to a different company or other changes in the organization happen so therefore you're left stranded right you don't have you, you worked for like a year on that pitch and it didn't actually happen so therefore you need to have that financial security first so that you can take care of this like lengthy sales cycle and also you need to be able to have multiple streams of potential clients you know you need to have these pipelines already uh, happening because what happens if you lose a client, you can just switch your focus to another client and so on and so forth. But that is very, very hard because you need to sell to so many clients at the same time that you need dedicated teams to, to set up that sales funnel. You cannot just handle everything yourself. Clients won't just come to you because you offer data science services. There are so many companies that already do that. Okay. So what will happen is that you will end up pitching for, I don't know, not that optimal projects instead of trying to get the big fish, okay? Instead of actually trying to get the big clients that can actually help you grow your agency and get even more clients in the long run. This leads me to also why the demand for these type of services might not be actually there, okay? Even if you have the offer perfectly mastered, maybe the demand for your services might not be there. And one of the main reasons why you might struggle with demand is the lengthy procurement process that you're subjected to because even in big companies right even in big companies different business areas struggle getting consultants in just because of the procurement process and the whole governance around how to actually handle external resources and they might just prefer the consultancies that they currently work for because they are big and they have a stable relationship they know exactly what to expect and therefore they don't want to take any chances with new smaller consultancies. And this leads me to another point, which is the fact that many clients aren't really risk takers. They have a very low appetite for risk. And that is because many times they don't know exactly what they want from the perspective of a data science consultancy. They might have a project that they think this is something that I can apply machine learning to, but they don't know exactly what happens if they realize like, okay, I don't need a data engineer now and I need a data scientist or the other way around or now I need a software uh, engineer so how do they switch that that's why they prefer to get permanent employees just because then they have a job description at the beginning they have an interview they say okay you're gonna be doing this but then if the project changes and the requirements change that guy is a perm and he still needs to do the job that, uh, that that needs to be done and it's easier for a, for a big company to 
to move people around if they're permanent. Because if they are consultants, usually they have a statement of work that they signed up for. They are getting paid for exactly a specific project, but if the company doesn't really know exactly what they want at the beginning, it's, it's quite hard to get a consultant because they need to create that statement of work. And if it's not clear, then the consultant can say, look, you just hired me to do this. But if you are perm, then the company can say, look, uh, Radu, you, okay, now you just need to do this. Okay, we've been doing this up until now, but now you need to change your focus to this. And you kind of have to change that focus because you are a permanent employee and you need to do what the company actually asks you to do. So these are the main reasons why it's hard to actually set up a data science consultancy when you are a data scientist already. Because you need soft skills, you need the sales skills more than data science skills. And if you are a technical person, if you actually love data science and what you're actually doing, it's going to be very hard for you to let go of the technical aspect of the work and just focus on the soft skills and focus on the sales and the business aspects of running an actual business. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you started your own data science consultancy. Let me know how it went for you, if you are successful at it or if you failed at it, because you always have to give it a try. Even if you fail at something, you still have to try it if you really want to. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these type of videos. And I'll see you in the next one.